We're Sid and Mackie, and we're professional mountain bikers on a quest to race the best and most challenging mountain bike races around the world. This life would not be possible without the support of our amazing sponsors and our team on Patreon. To get to do what we do is an amazing privilege, and we want to be as transparent as possible about how we make it happen. This year, we're excited to welcome some new sponsors, and we've put together a schedule that we are so, so excited about. We're also going to do something we've never done before and share some very big and scary goals very publicly. Which brings me to my second goal of getting on the podium at the It's 2023. Happy New Year. We took a couple weeks off from making videos, which you may or may not have noticed. And over those few weeks, we put our energy into making plans for 2023, deciding our race schedule and coming up with our goals. Some of which are pretty big, some big goals, which I'm personally a little bit nervous to share. We also have some exciting sponsorship news. And I think we'll start with talking about that. We're really lucky that we have all of you guys on YouTube and our team on Patreon to kind of take a little of the pressure off sponsorship season. It used to be very stressful. Now we can be a little more relaxed with it. If things don't work out, they don't work out. So we're able to really prioritize working with companies that we really enjoy working with. We have relationships that we've had for a long time. A number of the companies we're working with, we are going on a decade or more. We feel really lucky to have all the sponsors that we do and they're amazing companies backed by amazing people. So I guess we should probably stop Talk about dithering. Which companies <laughs> those are. Well, let, let's start with the companies that we are continuing to work with. So Niner Bikes, this is our fourth season working mm -hmm. with them. Yep. And they've been awesome. We've really enjoyed working with them. They make incredible bikes, as you guys know. We've gotten to be involved with some of the launches for recent bikes. Don't do it, Matt. This isn't a good idea. Sorry, Goose. It's time to buzz the tower. It's been really fun and always hilarious. Like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, Great company, and we're really, really stoked to continue to work with them this year. We will also be continuing to work with Shimano. Shimano has actually supported Mackie. This will be your 11th year working with Shimano. It's one of the longest. Obviously they make amazing product. And this year, the exciting news is we will also be running their shoes. Mm -hmm. And I think we're both really stoked about this. Their XC shoes are beautiful. We Not actually... that I'm judging a book by cover, but like we did just get them. <laughs> Expedo Pedals is probably the longest standing sponsor we're working with at this point. Another long relationship with them, really stoked on that. Uh, same with Stages. Stages, I think, were at 10 years now. Um, when we first started working with them, it was only power meters, right? Uh -huh. Like they didn't make yeah. the Dash or the SB20, which is the indoor bike that we mm -hmm. use. They've kind of evolved along with us over the years and been really, really crucial to our training. We will be going into our second year of working with Enduro Bearings. The partnership with Enduro Bearings has been really good because we've learned a ton about bearings with totally. working with them. That's one of the really cool things that they've done for their athletes is like we have actually gotten on the phone with their marketing and product manager and talked about how bearings work which maybe doesn't sound fun to you but we had a really good time you can look forward to some bearing overhaul videos mm -hmm. on Sid Fix's bikes we will be continuing our partnership with feedback sports their new stand is amazing oh, it's, it's awesome. so yeah. nice it's, it's lightweight really it's like super sturdy so that's been really nice and we already had all of their tools in the shop so that's true. we're set we have worked with fox suspension for several years now and obviously amazing suspension Great product, great people. Velo Saddles will continue to be a sponsor of ours. We've been super happy with their saddles, saddles. grips. Yeah. As you guys know, Competitive Cyclist has been a huge supporter of this channel. It's been a big reason that we have been able to make YouTube work. And they're so. just a really great resource for anyone who needs exactly what they need yeah. quickly. <laughs> quickly. And they have great customer support. We always hear that all the time. And we will continue to run laser helmets. We've been really stoked with their kinetic core this year. Really comfy, great fitting helmets. And light. And light. I think now we can talk about the new things. Talk about the new thing. We have a wheel sponsor this year, which is very exciting. In the past, we've run Shimano wheels, really enjoyed them. But we are working with Noble Wheels and Bird Spokes this year to do super lightweight, 
custom carbon wheels. They're also going to be gorgeous. They're also going to be really <laughs> beautiful. We've never had the opportunity to do custom wheels before and like colors and yeah, like choose different rim hub combos. I'm, I'm really excited. The way that Noble does their wheel building is like you can go on their site and you can pick your rim and your spokes and your hub. So we're actually going to try out a bunch of different hubs this mm -hmm. year um, to kind of show you guys that option and also just to sort of decide what we like. We will also be working with Primal Wear for clothing. This will allow us to do our custom order in a way that does not involve us shipping 300 pieces of custom clothes out of our living room. I'm sure everyone is relieved to that, especially everyone who tried to get an international package from us this year. <laughs> there will be a new kit design for this year. Primal is helping us with that. We will be opening up the Be More Awesome jersey kit orders as soon as that design is finished. And you will be able to put your order in on Primal's website and they will be fulfilling it, which is amazing yeah. for everybody. We're super excited about that. We're also super excited to design a new kit because we haven't done that for years and mm -hmm. I think it's going to be awesome. So stay tuned for that. All right. So our last new sponsor, we are extremely excited about this, but we will be partnering with Maxis in 2023. We got a lot of questions about tire sponsor this past year because we did not have a tire sponsor in 2022. Midway through the year, Maxis sent us an email. We're like, you guys don't have tires. Like, can we send you some to try out? And we were like, sure, but we want to keep it unofficial. Yeah, keep it cash. It was the middle of the year. Uh, we really enjoyed the tires and we were able to work out something with them for this year. We have some exciting plans there of some cool video stuff on tire choice and like, understanding the technologies that go into tires because it's it's there's a lot of information and it can be really confusing and we want to like try to help explain that so that you know what sort of tires you should be running for different conditions and different situations and stuff yeah i guess it's time to talk about plans a eh? january 2023 That's really soon. <laughs> In a few weeks, we will be flying to Chile to do our first race of the season. You might remember if you've been watching the channel for a while that we have raced in Chile before. We did Andy's Pacifico in 2016 and 2019. I think we only have videos about it in 2019. And this year we are doing something different, same country, very different place, very different race. We will be racing at Trans Andes, which is a five day cross country stage race in Chilean Patagonia, which is one of the most beautiful places on earth. So we are really, really excited about that one and can't wait to share a little bit of our process of getting ready for a stage race that early in the season. In July, we are going back to British Columbia. This year we will be racing BC Bike Race for the first time since 2019. I'm terrified. This one I'm definitely nervous about. It was pretty rough in 2019. I had some knee issues, I got sick. So um, yeah, we will be preparing much more this time than when we did it last time. And hopefully it will also go much better. Probably the series that I am most excited about this year is the new single track series that some of our fellow pro racers have put together. It's four races and they're all focused on like, real mountain biking. The first one is Moab Rocks, which as you guys know, we've raced a number of times and absolutely love. Unfortunately, I put this as a little bit of a tight turnaround because this is Trans Andes and this is Moab Rocks. So by the time we get back, we have like 10 or 11 days. The second in the single track series is in May. May 7th, it's to the Grand Junction Rides and Vibes. That's an event that we've heard really great things about, but have never had the opportunity to do. So that will be exciting. A month later, June 11th, is the Whistler Back 40. And this is the one that we're not totally sure we're gonna be able to make it to. Hopefully we will. And then the last one on the series for 2023 is the Downeyville All Mountain. So that's the combo of the Downeyville Cross Country and the Downeyville Downhill. We've raced Downeyville a lot of times. I have done well at Downeyville a number of times. Unfortunately, we will be racing BC Bike Race the week before Downeyville. Hopefully that means that we'll be in really good shape for it. And then the last event of our season, well, that we have planned so far, is Trans Madeira. Trans Madeira is a 
one, two, three, four, five. Five day enduro stage race. We haven't done a whole lot of enduro stage racing recently. We've done them in the past, loved them, haven't recently, and have definitely never been to Madeira. So I'm absolutely stoked on this one. It's gonna force us to spend more time at the bike park this year, spend time working on our descending skills, as well as our fitness and aerobic capacity. So I think it's gonna be a nice balance of like making sure that we are the, as good of athletes, as well-rounded of athletes as we possibly can be. So these are not all of the races we're going to do next year. These are just the ones that we know we're gonna do next year because they have announced their schedules and because they're kind of the focus races for us. We will be piecing in a lot of additional events in between these ones. Feel free to leave suggestions in the comments. You cannot promise anything, but let us know what events you'd like to see us do. And uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be a very cool year. Sid and I took very different approaches this year with our goal setting, which Coach Mike thought was hilarious. Mine were very sort of specific and results focused, whereas Sid's were much more process oriented. And what's cool is that both of those are totally valid ways of setting goals. Goals are supposed to be smart. They're supposed to be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. I think it's helpful to remember that at different points in your life, in your career as an athlete, you might have different types of goals. I chose results-based goals because that's what I need right now to give me kind of the incentive and the focus to do the training I need to do well at these events. Sid chose more process-oriented goals because right now for her that is more motivating. It kind of helps her know what are the next steps in this journey, in this you know career as an athlete. And also because she never really got the opportunity to race cross country seriously. She had one season in 2019 and then she got injured at the end of the season. So she never really got the opportunity to build off of that success in 2019 and see what she could do. So for her setting results-based goals, doesn't really make sense because she hasn't had the opportunity to see what she's capable of. My big goal, the goal that I kind of chose all of my other goals around is basically to just train consistently and focus on cross country style events for the next four years. So that means no changing goals, no major setbacks. It is the one thing I have never quite been able to pull off. So I guess you could say my number one goal is consistency for the next four years. My first goal is to win the Downeyville Classic All Mountain, which means doing well at both Saturday's cross country and Sunday's downhill. I've had good results at both of these events in the past, but never in the same year. If I wanna succeed, I'm gonna to have to work hard on both my fitness and my descending skills, which means including park days and skills work in addition to the riding and intervals Coach Mike has planned for me. And this year is gonna be especially difficult because it's part of the single track series and just a week after BC Bike Race. My second goal is to prioritize recovery because if you want to race more, you have to train more. And if you want to train more, you have to recover more. So that will probably mostly look like sleeping more, but sometimes it'll look like this. Which brings me to my second goal of getting on the podium at BCVR. The last time I raced BCVR, Sid and I were racing together on a co-ed duo team. This time I'll be racing pro men, so it's gonna be even harder to get on the podium. I'm gonna to have to really prioritize building my endurance so that I can race hard for seven days. My third goal is to improve my climbing fitness, specifically my functional threshold power or FTP. I'd like to get my FTP up to a point where I can be at the pointy end of XC length and stage race events. I've calculated this to be about a 10% improvement from where I am today. Realistically speaking, I would be thrilled with a 5% improvement this year and then being able to make marginal gains for the next few years. 5% is about 11 watts on my FTP, so it's not a lot, but since I'm already pretty fit right now, it is a pretty big ask. My final goal is to podium at a regional level enduro race. If I'm gonna succeed, I'll need to prioritize strength work and visualization, which will help me with the strength and focus I need to race enduro well. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed because over the next few weeks, we will be sharing a behind the scenes look at our training and preparation and how we hope to make these goals a reality. That was like a 50 watt FTP increase in a year. Yeah.
Until next time, don't forget to be more awesome.